Welcome back to What RT Noobs with General Disturbance. This is an Object 261 Tier 10 Soviet SPG. It's located on the, well, the northeast spawn of Nebelberg, and it's under the command of the Baseman from Hell, and he loves grand battles. Now, the Object 261, it's got an 18 centimeter howitzer, not the standard calibers which will normally be 152mm or 203mm. No, he's got the 18cm one, capable of doing 900 alpha, penetrating 45mm of armour, and it's got a burst radius of 10 meters. But he's only got 20 shells to shoot, and I don't think he could climb up that cliff to get up onto the hill. I don't think you've got enough traction off those rocks, but actually, no, from that angle, he's not going to be able to do it. You might be able to reverse up there, actually, because you've got better traction in reverse than you have forward sometimes. At least that's my experience. Anyways, following the GW E100 round, the um, this RT is actually based on the IS-7. It's the IS-7 hull. Never got put into production, though, so it's a fake tank, I'm afraid, but, well, they did propose that they were going to build one based on this hull. Batchat's fired his first round. He's got three shot autoloader. And base man's getting ready to shoot. There's a whole bunch of enemy tanks off to the south east corner of the map. And a mouse. Oh, lovely one! He actually damaged two tanks with one shot there. Hit the mouse for 185. He got the type 5 heavy for 191. And he got some stun assist. Now it's fairly fit quick reload on this RT. It's 27 seconds, which is not bad for 18 centimeters. And it is possible to actually burn through all of the shells in your RT in one battle very, very quickly. He's lining up the shot on the mouse. Rounds out. Yep, that one hit. He didn't stay to watch the shell. And we always say you should stay to watch the shell to see what happens to it, to see if it fell short, if it went long, if it was a blind hit. It's very important to get this information. Got an object 2684, the Bobject, over on the uh, west side of the map. And th oh, this is a target rich environment this is at this moment I'd be loading the premium ammo because you've got so many targets there if you increase the splash radius with a premium round it makes a big difference and he hits four enemy tanks and sets the type 5 alight he's burning he's burning and he goes down to a shot from the mouse on our team so base man doesn't collect that kill but he really contributed to the to the death of that guy <laughs> Yeah, I'd definitely be loading the premium ammo. When they all bunch together like that, you, you just increase the splash radius. And for some reason, his shell didn't hit the target there. So that's important information that he didn't get. Or well, he did get on this occasion. The burst radius goes up by one meter. But that just one meter does make a big difference. Because remember, it's pi r squared is the actual uh, formula to work out the area. And if you increase the radius by two meters, well, not the radius, but the size of the uh, diameter by two meters that can make an overall huge difference to the amount of damage you do much easier to hit the 60 tps because they are actually on the flat the other tanks are actually on the hill and when they're on the reverse slope it can be difficult to get shots on the enemy this strip is out on his own and he's getting pummeled and he's gone Baseman's loaded, rounds out in the 60 TP, fires fairly quickly, lands the shell between them and actually picks up damage from both, stunning them both, and that helps his team again. And there goes one of them. So he's picked up a load of damage assistance and stun assistance. He's up to 3k of damage already, 1.3k of stun assist. Okay, Heshbon. Direct hit! 424. And stun assist. And more. Oh, he's having a good game. 
I can see why he likes it. There's just so many targets to shoot at. As an arty, it's basically it's an all-you-can-eat buffet. And there goes the Heshbon. He's lining a shot up on the 60 TP, but the rock's protecting him. But he might be able to hit that Jaegeru if the windmill doesn't get in the way. Splashes him. He also stunned the Leopard, who's down to his last few hit points, and he's out. They are now four tanks ahead of the enemy at this point. He was looking for targets. The town is virtually theirs. So it's really only these guys down on the south side. Trying to line the shot up on the Cranbon. He's pulling back and it's again over a ridge line, which makes it difficult. That 60 TP's moved up too far and he takes a round direct hit for 301. Baseman's now at 3.7k, 2.5k of stun assist. He's going to have a nice score out of this one. TVP. Thin-skinned medium tank. Can he put a round into this guy? Almost loaded. He looks like he's taking up a firing position. He fires around in. Doesn't look. Oh, he killed him. And that looks like that was a penetrating round. It's a pity we didn't stay to actually see the tank blow up. That would have been quite satisfying. Now, the only reason he's actually moving now is to avoid counter battery, changing position and changing angle as well. Lining up a shot on the T57, fires it in, went long. And that's important information you need to know when you uh, watch to see what happens to the shell. And if you did actually miss it because it went long, I think it may have been a bit of a, a snapshot. It was dialed in fairly quickly and shot. But he's heading up into the north area because the enemy tanks are actually making their way up from the southeast. And so Artie's trying to relocate. He's still got nine shells left. Still carrying all his premium rounds. I would have fired all my premium rounds by now with all those enemies close together. Now, many of you may know this map from the Halloween specials. Yes, um, they often allowed this map to be used for Halloween specials because it's so big. Okay, the M48 pattern made it up close to where we were last located. And he's being held at bay by a Fosh. The rest of the RT have moved. And they found the enemy arty now. Just killed the Conqueror gun carriage. And an object 261 on the enemy team has been spotted. Baseman's going to dial in straight away. Yes, you notice how he's almost a professional. He dials in straight away on the target using his mini-map. Can't hit the C-57, he's, or IS-7 rather, he's in the lee of the uh, castle in Defilade. The GWE-100 is an easy shot, but he goes instead for the cram farm because the GWE would be killed off very, very quickly by our, his teammates. Instead, he wants this, uh, this cram farm. He's almost loaded, but he can't get a shot in the cram farm. There goes the GWE. M48 pattern up near the castle. Lost sight of him. He's got eight shells left. Going for the 60 TP instead. He's been spotted and he's stopped behind this wreck. He's about to get hit. Oh, that one went long. Okay, the pattern's still in the castle grounds. We're still not loaded. Seven rounds left. The pattern goes down. There aren't that many enemies left alive. Just five. Four. It's going for... Oh, he's got something obstructing the field of fire. I think that's that, that hill. And he landed the round next to the M48. 
Okay, he's still relocating. There's only three left on the enemy team. One RT and two other tanks. I think one's a medium, one's a... Oh, no, both hit heavy, sorry. So one RT and two heavies. He's turning to face the 60TP and the T-57 heavy. T-57's on that corner. 60TP's up here. He was last seen hiding behind that wreck, if you remember. And the rest of the team are homing in. If he can stun the guy, he might be able to pick up some stun assistant. Oh my gun, the enemy rt has been spotted. And I'm not sure if Baseman is in a position to take advantage of that one. And the 60TP and T-57 Heavy have been found. There goes the T-57. It's just the 60TP now. And, well, that rock face is going to be in the way. And this building here. And that's it. It's all over. Didn't even use up all his shells in that one. Normally he runs out of ammo. And it's the first class tanker for the base man from Hill in the Object 261. He managed to get a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits in this one. He got 15. A gauze medal for doing more damage than eight times the hit points to his own vehicle. And a confederate medal for hitting more of the enemy than anyone else on his team. And his win rate from that battle was 4,539, which is super unicum standard. If we look at team score, we can see that he didn't get the highest damage in the game. He got the second highest. The highest was the T-57 Heavy, who got 6,145 hit points of damage. Then came Base Man with 4,844. And next was the Cram Farm with 4,614. When it came to kills, it was the T-57 again, who got five kills, three kills to Superconk, the Fosh B, the IS-7. Base Man only got one kill in this game, but he got two medals. The IS-7 only got a Piscucci's medal in that one. And when it came to base XP, it was, yes, that T-57 Heavy won all three columns. 1,208 to him, 1,082 went to the Superconk, and then we got Base Man with 949, just ahead of the Cranvan with 945. Base Man fired 14 rounds of ammo in this game, so he still had six rounds spare. Seven direct hits, one penetration, that was the shot on the TVP, a uh, direct hit which actually wiped him out. Pity we couldn't actually watch that happen. 19 splash as well so he actually got multiple splashes when he fired rounds into groups of enemy tanks and did 4844 hit points of damage all of it at more than 300 meters he damaged 11 of the enemy killed one and did uh, 218 hit points of damage assistance plus 2535 hit points of stun assist off 19 stuns on a premium count, he earned 78,743 credits, got 50,000 credits to complete the mission events, and that brought up a total of 128,743 credits. And after resupply of ammunition, took away 101,023 credits. He also received 7 bonds for the battle, and 1,423 XP, and there was no multiplier, so that's all the experience points he took away on that occasion. He says, I do, I love grand battles, whether as a light or as an arty. Well, certainly you have got a lot of talent with it because you're hitting lots and lots of enemies. And of course, the Object 261 is made for uh, the grand battle because it's so quick on the reload. The only problem really is that you, A, don't get as many shells as you should get. And B, of course, because it's 18 centimetres, you're not going to get a high calibre damage on the enemy with every shot, uh, which is a pity. But uh, then... I suppose this is the RT of choice for many people uh, at this tier be simply because of the fire rate. It makes it much more easier to get medals like Confederates and Gauze Medal if you're good and Baseman is good. If you enjoyed that replay, please give this video a like and do subscribe to our channel please. And thanks for watching.